Hey everybody, it's Christy with Christy Cole Artistry, and tonight I'm going to be working on two canvases. Um, but before we begin, I'd like to give a shout out to JB Poor Art, uh, Jana and Angela. Thank you for joining us and thank you for subscribing. So the first little canvas is going to be um, an experiment in using a new hair dryer that I, that I just bought. And so it's just a little 8x10. I'm going to be trying out a color combination of pink and greens as well. On the actual pour canvas for tonight, it's going to be a 12 by 16 level 1 canvas, and I'm going to be using purple and gold. So um, I'm going to go ahead and flood the 8 by 10 canvas first so that we can um, work on that Dutch pour, and then we'll break and I will um, flood the 12 by 16 and we'll work on that one. So bear with me, I'll be right back. So I brought you back a little bit early so you can watch me flood the canvas. So um, what I am using for my um, my uh, flood paint tonight is some of the Blick acrylic titanium white that I've mixed with Floetrol and water and I'm just uh, storing it in an old artist loft flow acrylic bottle. And I'm putting this on cardboard because my purple pour is going to go right over here and I don't want to have to change this out. So we're just going to flood this little baby canvas here with white and then we'll talk about the colors. And I'm going to give this a nice good dousing um, of the white flood paint because like I said we're going to be using a new dryer and I have no idea what the power on it is. Um, so I want to make sure that my paint will flow if the power is not great enough to help it flow. And again, I use these 8x10s as experimental canvases. Um, it's a good way to try out color, color palettes that you're not sure of without wasting a big old canvas. So, and I buy these at um, Michael's. Alright, so now we're just going to do the sides because I still want it to look nice. And I, you know, I do sell these, so oh, some people just like a little picture, a little painting to hang wherever. Okay, so got the white on. And these little canvases are have a lot of dips and things in them. So I did level this one. Um, and of course when I level, I level the top, the bottom, the sides, the sides. Um, if it's a bigger canvas, I also do the center. <clears throat> but this is a tiny little one. All right, I'm going to put my thing up there. All right, so tonight's colors for our ex <clears throat> experimental pit painting are going to be Artist Loft Deep Green don't use greens a lot unless they're accent colors, but tonight they're going to be the center of attention. So, um, Artist Love Green Yellow. Okay, then I have this um, Ahuhu, 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 Pearl, oh boy, uh, Chrysler Barrel, I know Barrel is a name of a rock, so I'm guessing Green Rock, but uh, if anybody knows how to pronounce that, you can put the pronunciation in the comments. And last but not least, um, my accent color is going to be Liquitex Basics Rose Pink. Sorry about that. Lost my cap. Uh, rose Pink. Had to actually go out and buy some more of this because I ran out. Okay, that cap does not want to stay on. <laughs> it's going to be one of those nights. Okay, so again, the whole point of this is number one to try out these greens and pink together, and number two, to try out my new hair dryer. So here we go. I am going to do a cute little corner to corner, and I'm actually gonna put a little sprig up on this one, because I wanna see if this dryer works and how it works. Okay, next is the green yellow. I'm not a, a big green fan, but lately I have 
uh, been adding green into some of my paintings and they are coming out beautifully. Next is the Chrysoberyl, which is a pearl, so we should get some cells out of this. Okay, and last but not least is going to be our Liquitex Basic Rose Pink. I like pink and green together. They just are natural together. I am having a heck of a time with this pearl color, or this bottle. Okay, all right, we're gonna move those out of the way. And we are going to blow them out with my new hair dryer. So, um, many of you know, let's see if I can show you this. Ooh, I have, oh no, I can't. Um, I have a, for the, if you've watched my videos, you'll see that I did show you this in my um, tour of my studio is um, I have a metal rack that holds um, eight different appliances. So I have one, two, three, four, five, five hair dryers plus my little miniature um, world's smallest sleep floor. And this little thing with this nozzle on there is so powerful it would shoot this paint everywhere. So we're not gonna use that tonight. Instead, we're gonna use my new dryer. So I'd like to introduce my new dryer, and this is the world's smallest hair dryer. Voila! Isn't it cute? It's the cutest thing I've ever seen. And it even has a little, um, little, uh, like heat source thing on the end. Isn't that cute? Now it only has two powers, so off and on. Not sure if it's going to be strong enough to blow this, but we're going to try it because it was so cute. So here is how I purchased this, and this is a USB, um, so of course I have my universal USB that I plug into my smallest leaf blower and now this um, world's smallest hair dryer, but it says, you'll love this, extra long cable, which it does have, economic design, real working hair dryer, plugs into USB be computers or charging adapters. Warning, choking hazard, small parts, not for children. So it's for children five and up, no batteries required. So here is the package it came in, and here is the dryer. And just so you can see how small it is, this is one of my normal dryers that I use all the time. So there's, whoop, there's the difference. <laughs> Isn't it cute? So that's what we're going to do tonight on this little tiny painting. We're going to try the world's smallest hair dryer. Okay, so I mean, like I said, I'm just going to blow it out like I normally would with any other painting and hope that um, this is strong enough to do so. If not, that, that was the experiment to see if it'd work. Here we go. And it's not. Wow, it doesn't move anything. <laughs> it didn't move anything. All right, let's give it a little help. See if we can, see if we can help it a little bit by adding some white. <laughs> it's funny too because the world's smallest leaf blower blows paint everywhere. All right, let's see if that helped any. Wow. Nope. I think the paints would have to be almost watery. Aww. Okay, well, now we know this one doesn't work as well. So let's, should we try the leaf blower? Oops, I've got my leaf blower <sighs> cord in the paint. Okay, let's try. We'll sell this leaf blower. All right. So, it was cute, but it didn't have any power to it at all. Alright, um, I'm going to move my next canvas out of the way because I know this thing blows paint. And I really don't want it all over my, new, my other canvas. Okay, so here is the world's smallest leaf blower. We're going to try that. Here we go.
one worked. Um, hmm. It did work, and the and the color combination isn't bad. I'm not sure if I like the the um, composition on this one. So since we're going to be doing our next picture shortly, I'm going to set up my regular hair dryer. And just give this a little bit of a better blowout here with my regular hair dryer and my small, uh, small attachment. Because I do, I mean, the colors are pretty. They're very springy. Let me see if this is on now. There we go. Okay, so let's try blowing it out and giving it uh, just a little bit more. The small dryer did not work, so let's ignore that. But the color combination on here is actually really pretty. I like it. So I think I will do this on a larger canvas. Um, it definitely needs to be on a larger canvas in order to get the colors to um, spread and, and actually make a decent um, <sighs> composition but it's actually not so bad. It's kind of cute. It's more springy and we are in fall. Um, and again, the, the s small hair dryer didn't, didn't blow it out so it started out not blown out very nice, but I think it ended up pretty cute. All right, let me look at it. I put it on cardboard again because we're going to do the other painting so that I can move this one around. Yeah, it needs more wet over here. What do you think from your end? You're looking at it from how I was looking at it. It's not too bad. I'm just going to add a little white here. I think it'll dry prettier than, than it looks right now too. But yeah, that world's smallest hair dryer blows nothing like that leaf blower. So that's good to know. All right. So this was our little 8x10. Okay. I think I, I like the color combination. I'm not sure what you guys feel about it, but I do like the color combination. So um, comment. Let me know if you like this color combination because I'm thinking that it would look nice on you know something larger now this is a 12 by 16 um, level 3 canvas um, we're going to be working on a 12 by 16 level 1 canvas on our second painting um, tonight but do you think that this much bigger or do you think I should try even bigger I'm almost thinking I need something uh, in a 10 by 20 almost because what I want is I want to be able to get it to go up and spread out and have more white space. And I think in order to do that, I need a um, taller canvas. So, all right, let's put this one, because again, it was an experiment. We're just gonna put it over there on the other side of the table. And again, here were the colors that I used on that one. I used um, Artist Loft Deep Green, Artist Loft Green Yellow, a hoo hoo. That's how I'm going to say it. I don't know how to pronounce it. Pearl <sighs> Chrysobarrel. Chrysobarrel. Chryso Chrysobarrel? I don't know. And then um, uh, Liquitex Basic Rose Pink. So those were the colors on our first painting for tonight. Let's move those over and let's get this one. 
leveled and let's get working on the second one. Okay, so our second painting, as I said, is going to be in purples. I have them right here. And again, we're gonna use a white background. Okay, um, so we're just gonna get straight to it. There we go. So we're gonna flood our canvas. And I just realized that I didn't double check the Make, to make sure it was level. Um, I had it here earlier and I kind of knew that you know at this crease I needed it to line up and at this crease down here I needed it to line up but side to side I should have double checked. So we try to remember to level your canvases here, 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 here and on a bigger canvas centers. Okay all right so let's spread this one out. I can tell it's a lot flatter than the smaller canvas. It's not um, not sinking in already. Okay, so that one's n nice and flat right now. Okay, so tonight, like I said, I'm going to be doing purples. I'm doing a smaller canvas because I've been doing so many large ones lately that I thought I should um, do a few smaller ones and see, um, you know, how they look in the smaller version. Another thing to be cautious of when you're doing smaller canvases, and I tend to overdo it all the time, is the amount of paint that you're putting on there. Because again, for me, um, I always want to have a decent amount of white space and then I go fill it up with paint and I lose my white space. So it's not that they don't come out pretty because they still do, but you know. Okay, so I've spread my weight out and I'm going to pop the, pop the bubbles because I do see some. So I'm going to torch them. You know what? I had all weekend to go find a torch. And I didn't even think about it. And I know it's got fuel in it. There we go. We had one of those days where you just, you know you should have just not done something. Picked it up the next day. That's how my day has been going. Okay. Um... So I already see a big bare spot there that I'll fix. I have my my um, my small bottle. Um, I will always keep a squeeze bottle so that I can fill in spots like this when I see them. Yeah, this is a pretty big spot, but as long as you mix the paint the same, it should run down and um, correct the sides. I'm just going to run the bead now. I was going to wait, but I'm going to run it now. That way I make sure that I have enough paint on the top of the canvas to um, so everything flows when it's supposed to. Alright, so tonight's colors are... Oops. Okay, tonight's colors, again, I'm going to start out with... Um, Liquitex Basic Dioxane Purple. I love that purple. And I used it, I've used it a couple of times recently. Wow! And I like the way it, oh, the way it um, accents the other colors when they flow together. So, <clears throat> dioxanine purple tonight. Um, okay, and I'm going to go from here to there. And then, I'm going to get fancy tonight. Okay, and then on top of the dioxanine purple and it's Liquitex Basic, on top of that, I'm going to be using Liquitex Basic Brilliant Purple. Very nice color. 
So let's get that on there. And we're going to be using Liquid Text Basic Prism Violet. I have not used this in a while, and I love this color. Okay. Next, we're going to be using Artist Loft Violet. And it's stripping. <laughs> Since it's dripping, I'm going to shake it up a little bit. Just sat a while. Okay. There we go. Oh, I love these purples. So pretty. And then, since that was um, Artist Loft Violet, um, I'm also using Artist Loft Light Violet. So we're using five purples and a gold. And it's just because I really like how these purples work together. And the Prism Violet has almost a red, red tinge to it, which um, when it blows out, if you can get it to stay, has just a beautiful like accent to it. Okay, then I decided I wasn't gonna use the Metallic 24 Karat Gold by uh, DecoArt Extreme Sheen, but I decided that since I'm using purples, I need this beautiful pop, and this gold always pops nicely. So we're gonna do that. I am giving it a bit of a dousing because I really do want the gold to come through. Okay, so we've got all our beautiful colors. I'm going to wipe off my beautiful OXO spatula. There we go. And my other spatula, just so they don't get, the paint doesn't get all hard on them those off to the side and then we're gonna get ready to go here okay so here we go so again I'm going to be using my Revlon dryer um, my Revlon dryer is the one that I use the small nozzle it has the uh, high low and then it has this button here and that button gives it a little more oomph so let's move the paints a little bit farther out of the way Okay, let's blow it out. Alright, I am going to do Alright, here we go. see it. Um, I, I, I'm glad I put m uh, enough gold in here, but down here is where you can really see the prism violet popping through, and then right in here, here, and here. And it's such a beautiful accent color. I lost it here, um, but also the gold is just making some beautiful cells over here. So I really like this one so far, but I do have some work to do on it. So I'm going to fix the sides because I know I can see here that they're really messed up. And then um, I'll bring you down so you and I'll show you the close-up. So I'll be right back. Okay, so here is our little green painting. I think it's really pretty for just a little 8x10. The color combination is nice. Um, it almost went to a salmon pink. Uh, design would look definitely better on a larger canvas. Should have maybe done a cup pour or something and then blown it out. But at least I know I like the greens and the pinks together. Um, world's smallest hair dryer doesn't work. Okay, next one is our purple and gold. This one turned out beautiful. Okay, so if you look at it now, I did clean up this area here because I wanted more white space right through there. And then here I filled in the white that was missing. Um, but the rest of it I love, so let me bring you down, and I will show you what's going on with this. So here is the um, prism violet that I like, that has, a sort of, like I said, sort of a red tinge to it. 
with the dioxanine purple and the light violets. And then you've got it all throughout here. Beautiful. And then it comes down here. And the gold is just shimmering already. And we've got some cell action going in the gold here. That's really pretty. Some more of the prism violet. And then look at the shimmer up here. It's so pretty. Okay, so then we're going to go down, back down to our beginning of our Y shape. And we'll go back up this side. And there are some really interesting things going on in here. Ooh, that looks like a scary face. Like there's the nose and the mouth and the eye. But that's in our, our um, uh, prism uh, violet. And then the hair is up there. <laughs> and then the gold and the prism violet went up here too. So let's back it up a little bit so that you can see the whole painting. I think this one came out pretty good. I, I do like the purple and the gold. Um, we were, I talked to my husband and we were debating between copper and um, uh, gold. And with purple, I was a little afraid to do the copper, so I did the gold. And I'm really glad I did because I love purple and gold. So there you go. So if you like these paintings and this color combination, give me uh, some yeah, who's in the in the comments so I know. Um, and like I said, thank you to all my new subscribers. I'm having so much fun showing you these videos. And uh, until the oh, and my contact information is at the end of the video.